I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. You know, when God begins to deal with you, and he begins to challenge you, Nehemiah, we know, was the cup's king bear, uh, the king's cup bearer. Yeah, he's the king's king bearer too, but he's a cup, the king's cup bearer. He had to taste everything before the king got it in case it was poisoned or something like that. But Nehemiah had a heart after God. And in our version, or the portion of Scripture we're going to read here this morning, I want to talk about it because our society is broken down. And we need Nehemiahs in our society. Yeah. We need Nehemiahs because we know there are areas of our lives that need to be fixed. There are areas of our lives people's lives that need to be restored. And God has the answer for us. But you know what? We have to be willing to follow. It's unique this morning how God has brought different people to the service this morning because I told you probably six months ago that God gave me a sermon to preach to you about why the church isn't growing. And it's unique here this morning that God has the right people here because you have the right heart to grow and to multiply. And those that don't fall into the category sometimes of not being here. And so this morning as I begin to share with this message, I want us to get into the first chapter here of Nehemiah. And I probably will not pronounce some of these names right, so you pronounce them how you pronounce them, okay? The, word of, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hekaniah, and it came to pass in Chrislev in the 20th year, as I was in Susan, the citadel, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The survivors who are left from captivity in the providence are there in great distress and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem is broken down, and the gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down, and I wept, and I mourned many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord, God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you, and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant. I pray before you day and night for the children of Israel, your servant, and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We acted very corruptly against you. We have not kept your commandments, the statutes, or the ordinances, which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray, the words you commanded your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast to the farthest parts of the heavens, Yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed and your great power and your strong hand. O Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer and your servant and the prayers 
of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servants prosper this day. I pray and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah had a role of importance in the kingdom. I want you to know you have a role of importance in the kingdom. God has hand chose, hand picked each one of you. But you know what? Some of us are like the report that Hananiah gave to the king. There's some things broken down in our lives. Some of us, it's health. Jerry's battled cancer for four years, five years, three. three. I had her more than she was. Three years, big battle. It's distracted or disrupted her pattern of life from where she wanted to be and where she wanted to be. But God has helped her to fight that battle. And it's a thing we have to recognize. You know, as I, I, as I concern for the church and that I listen to reports of the church and I re-listen to things that are happening. We have been faithful in doing what God called us to do, church. But I see many of you who are very discouraged. I go through a lot of periods of discouragement. I got up this morning at 1 o'clock and went outside and wept and cried because I see the hurts of your people. I carry some of your burdens. Some of you, your walls are broken down. Your dreams have been shattered. Your hopes. I see families that have been separated. I see health that has deteriorated. And when Hananiah came and he, he shared with Nehemiah, when Nehemiah asked, how is the battle going? How are they doing? And Hananiah came back and he said, they're discouraged. I'm going to paraphrase some things here. But they're in great distress. Folks, there's some great distress in the church at Point of Grace. Am I going to say we're unhealthy? No, I'm not going to say that. Because we've been faithful to what God has called us to do. He called us to be a healing, equipping, releasing center. And thank God we have released 133 people out that most, I would say 98% of them are serving in churches around the area. I take that as a great testimony to you for healing, equipping, and releasing. But I also know the strain that is placed on many of you. Hananiah said the gates are broken down. The wall the, the gates have been burnt with fire. The, the walls have been broken down. What does discouragement do? It disengages us from the true thing that God calls us to do. And we can look at it here. We can look at it in our own lives. When our walls get broken down or when our, our dreams get shattered or something begins to happen, it causes us not to move forward like God wants us to. They were there. They were equipped to handle the situation.
but they left their tools in their tool belts. Church, God told us he had equipped us. He had called us. He has equipped us. But because of discouragement, because of lack, we've held our tools in our till belts. I want to tell you this morning, God says it's time to rise and build. It's time to get our hands out of our pockets and rise and present the gospel. No matter what distress, what you have gone through, when you have your hands in Jesus' hand, you can walk through anything. Jerry's going to be a testimony of that. Gail's going to be a testimony of that. Donna's going to be a testimony of that. See, the intricate parts have been broken down. But the Spirit of God is still there. If you can't feel God's Spirit here this morning, I don't know what you want. Because I just felt like I was in the shower in the presence of Jesus. Brian and, and Paula the other day when they were here, they said, we walk into a lot of churches and we don't find what you guys got. We not, may not be many, but we're mighty in Jesus. And you know what? That's what I want God to do in your hearts and lives. Now I'm probably going to the hardest part of the message that I have to share with you. Where God, when I ask God, God, why is point of grace not growing? And I felt like God said, we have negative confessions. The confession that we have heard is we don't want to grow because we're going to lose what we've got. I said, God, I've heard people time after time after time after time say, we don't want to grow too big because we'll lose the family atmosphere we've got. Let me tell you, you can have it with 350 the same as you can have it with 20. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Because we did. One of the churches we pastored, we had 350, and we still had the same family atmosphere with 350 as we do with 20. But when fear comes in, when doubt comes in, when distresses begin to take over, when discontentment takes over, it causes us to put our tools in our tool belts. It causes us to put our hands in our pockets. It causes us to say, oh me, oh my. It costs too much. There's nothing too much for Jesus. Amen. There's nothing too much for Jesus. Negative confessions will bring negative results. I hope we can change those negative confessions. The second thing he told me, contentment, complacency. The bills are all being paid, Pastor. Yes, they are. By God. God has performed some tremendous miracles financially for us, folks. You know, praise God. We don't owe anybody anything. We're debt free. Thanks to God. But the weekly 
budget, the weekly things. God has supplied their needs. We don't have an abundance, but God has supplied our needs. But we are complacent. Bills are being paid to that pastor, so we don't need to reach out. God wants us to reach out. He tells us to go into the highways. And I'm sorry if your visitor here this morning, you're hearing my heart for my people. I love them. I also see them being destroyed by discouragement. Because I know God has so much more for us. God has so much more for us. There are souls to be saved. There are victories to be won. Contentment, complacency. The third one was just lack of commitment. Everything else is more important. This church is not going to save you. Okay? But Jesus tells us, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Because what I'm seeing, COVID did a very good job of that. The devil did a very good job of that. The thing that I see everywhere I turn is people are dying for fellowship. God created us to be fellowship people. And the one thing, in one area I see him robbing us more than anything else is not assembling ourselves together, building upon one another, praying with one another, loving on one another. I'm concerned for you. I'm concerned for this need in your life. And complacency and contentment and lack of commitment. And I know probably when I get done, I'm going to hear, well, Pastor, you don't, you don't understand. Yeah, I do understand. Because the scripture says, where your heart is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And my treasure is in heaven. I laid under the stars last night, sat in my chair under the stars last night. It's probably the first time that I've seen billions upon billions upon billions of stars. There were so many stars out last night. No moon, but just stars, and they lit up the heavens. I thought, Lord, help us catch a vision of what you have in store for us. Folks, Nehemiah wept and he cried and he fasted. I'm like Pam, I'm not a big crier. Since I had my heart attack, I'm a lot more crier now than I ever used to be. But I have wept. I have fasted for this congregation because I see what God has done and is doing. We are such an intricate part of the kingdom of God. You are such an intricate part of the kingdom of God. Where else could he bring them to heal them and to equip them and to release them with blessings? And boy, grace. This morning, my prayer is that you hear my heart, what I feel that God has shared with me to share with you. I said, Lord, how do we change that? And He brought the scripture out of Revelations. Go back and do your first works over again. Repent.
so I'll be the first one to the altar this morning. But you know what? It has to come from our hearts. We can do it up here. You know, a lot of people get saved up here. Well, I'm a Christian now. But when the change of the heart comes, when the change of the heart comes, we can zero in on it. This morning, he challenged us to repent. So in closing this morning, I'm going to ask us to do something. You may not want to. It's, it's perfectly up to you. But I'm going to turn around and I'm going to come to the altar. I'm going to ask Pam if you go ahead and play. If you hear what I'm saying, this is what I feel like the Lord says for us. Repent. Do our first works over again. I'm going to challenge you to come. Just spend some time around the altar. We couldn't get any deeper in God's presence than what we was this morning in worship. I just felt like the Shekinah glory was just hovering over. But I want each one of us, you examine your heart, you examine your life. And maybe you're here this morning and this, this may not be for anybody else. But it's for me. It's for you. This is where we want to come. This is where I want to humble myself. This is what God said to do and this is what I want to do.
made your altar. You made your place your altar. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for healing. For the restoration that God that you're bringing. For the encouragement, the strength. As I'll get into it next week, Lord, in the message. But God, you begin to show each and every one of those people the tools that they had in their toolbox to use. And God, you're going to show each and every one of us the tools in our toolbox that we have to repair the walls, to repair the gates, to repair the things. Lord, so that Lord, it, it again is a place Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for the repentance that took place in this place today. I thank you for the things that God, that you are, you are lifting up before us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the faithfulness of those that are here to heal, to equip, and Lord, to release so that, Father, your kingdom grows. And I thank you for each one, Lord, for every part that they've had to play in any part of that healing, equipping, and releasing. And Father, I just begin to ask that, Lord, that you begin to bring in new souls. Father, we have a lot of wounded warriors out there. We have a lot of people that's been on the, the front lines and have got injured. And Lord, they're laying in a hospital. They're laying, saying, I'm not important anymore. Yes, they are, Lord. They're important to the kingdom. Because God, you can heal them. You ask any one of those wounded warriors that's been out on a battlefield, where do they want to go? They want to go back to the battlefield. They want to go back to the front lines because they have buddies out there that are still fighting the battle and they want to be with them. Father, restore those that the enemy has disengaged. restore bring them back so that the healing and the restoration and Lord that they can go back to the front lines and they can become the soul winners they can become the teachers they can become the, the hands that bring Father, restore the spiritual condition of their hearts. Bind up the wounded. Heal the brokenhearted. Set the captives free. Father, we thank you for that. Father, we ask your blessing upon these beautiful people this morning. Because God, I believe that you're speaking to hearts and lives. And even in the process, you're restoring men and women to a relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. 